So what I want to do really quickly is talk about um, a, a customer that's using this. So you mentioned um, one customer that you've dealt with, but I'll mention a different one here that's kind of around the Unix side of it. And so on the Unix, the patching is a little bit different than it is with Windows, and as a result, they weren't patching that OS as frequently as they needed to just because, again, it was time-intensive and there was a lot of um, different issues that they had historically been running into. One of the other things um, that was critical for them was the password changes. So again, doing these changes that needed to occur to the server with some frequency every three months, every six months, kind of depends upon what your process is. So those were kind of some of the issues that they were running against when they got the, uh, the Blade Logic solution deployed in there. Um, you can see a couple things. Because they had um, a more efficient way to patch those Unix servers, and again, so I have Windows, I have Unix, I have Red Hat, I'm able to use the one tool to do the patching, so it's basically eliminating three tools into one, and it's uh, aiding with the efficiency, so they able, were able to get rid of whatever that previous process was, that tool utilized the blade logic to deploy some of those functional and security patches down. It also helped with their audits, so being able to quickly run any of those security and regulatory compliance audits, see what was out of spec, and then send the package down to bring them back into compliance. And again, you get that when you have different administrators bringing up the servers and they're not adhering to the same set of rules. So what you end up with are um, differences or drifts from how you really want that server to be deployed. And then the last one there, you kind of mentioned this as well, the tapping of the shoulder. So now what you're doing is freeing up your administrators to do, administrators to do some more strategic functions. Um, and then, of course, you can see the, uh, the quote there. So Blade Logic has allowed our Unix administrators to be more productive and more efficient. They could have not have taken on the job of consistently deploying patches without it. Demonstrating compliance with respect to patches is not effortless. The ability to, de to provide developers with an instant access to data without compromising the seg segregation of duties is making both support team members and developers more productive. And so what you'll see there is not only were the administrators uh, users of the tool, so was their development team. Okay. Well, thank you. And as I mentioned before, BMC has reported that they get the biggest bang for the buck out of uh, this Blade Logic server automation product than any other product that they have. Okay. So good. We'll go to the next one, which is the network automation. And network administrators, again, I've got the various uh, manufacturers in there. So I have Cisco equipment. I have my uh, uh, Dell bought somebody who has the network equipment. So I've got Dell in there. I've got Boundary, et cetera. So what we're doing, of course, discovering the devices that are out there, deciding which ones are critical, and now what I'm doing is any patches that need to go down to those network devices, they still have the security and regulatory compliance that I need to audit against. Um, I'm able to see that real time, and then it's a little bit different technology, so what you'll see there about the fourth bullet down, it talks about this smart merge technology. Um, very similar to the packages that are built for the servers, but now I'm doing it for the network devices. And what's different with the network devices, historically when I change a configuration uh, on a network device, I have to send the whole configuration file down to the device and reboot it. So at that point, we're unable to do any access. With this smart merge technology, what I'm able to do is see uh, these 10 configurations. It needs the two more, so I'm able to smartly merge those two configurations into the 10, making it 12, and the device gets to keep running. And so before, when we talked about comparing the configurations, then what you'll start to see is when I started up that device, it looked this way. As time has gone on, I've had to make some changes. So now I have a new trusted configuration or baseline, but this is still valid. That's what I want to be my goal going forward. And that smart merge technology is um, really a, a good differentiator 
with our solution, the network automation, when compared to some other solutions out there in that I don't have to take devices down anymore just to make changes. Okay, so I think I, I, think I understand what, what you're saying. This works best in a heterogeneous environment, right? Because if you just had Cisco, you probably could say, well, Cisco can do all this stuff. They have network management or Cisco works. or They have tools that, that, uh, that, that can do this. But if you have multiple vendors or, or you know, maybe if you just want to hand, handle the compliance side of things, make sure every, everything is consistent, why not use BMC? Exactly. Because like you mentioned, it's Cisco and it works good on the Cisco devices, but what about the other network devices that are out there? So then that's where I would, at this point, introduce new tools or, like you mentioned, just utilize the BMC tool to um, support the Cisco and all the other vendors that are out there. But, but even if, let's say that Cisco sent out a notice that said, hey, we just found a security violation in one of our routers. You need a software patch to, to fix that. Mm -hmm. uh, you could even use this, right, to, uh, to download that, that software patch. Absolutely. So it becomes okay. the, the mechanism to deploy whatever that patch is that Cisco just released. Okay. Looks good. Okay. So a quick uh, use case on the... Uh, the network devices, so here we've got a Fortune 500 manufacturing company that had uh, north of 14,000 routers and switches. So again, what you'll see here is manual configuration processes. Um, they had these mandatory security policies that they needed to be reporting against, but they didn't have the resources um, to do that. But then, um, before the solution, those were very manual operations. After implementing the network solution, you can see there 99% of the devices were meeting those mandatory security policies, and that's because um, in the Blade Logic tools, I'm able to import all of those regulatory compliance templates and then run the audit against my devices, and whatever discrepancy occurs is um, built into a package for me natively that I can then send down to the devices. So, again, it's removing a lot of the, the human interaction that's needed. Uh, the last one that they talk about, um, 180,000 changes that they sent out. Again, because I'm with that smart merge tech technology, I'm looking at a configuration. I just need to make a handful of changes, but I need to smartly merge that into the existing configuration. So, again, it's a really good, when I say that audit, that's really key because I'm seeing the baseline, I'm doing my audit, and if it's just a couple of changes, I'm quickly building a package that can go down to that device. And so there are... Uh, what they're saying, after the vendor security advisory, um, they configured the rule set, applied it to the entire network, it identified 400 devices that needed update, and utilizing that smart merge template, they deployed it, and it took just a few minutes. So, again, very efficient in the way um, that it's allowing you to now begin to manage those network devices. Okay. okay. Let's, uh, let's go on. Okay, so we've got a couple more solutions. One is the database. And so what this one is doing, again, across the, uh, uh, of course, the popular ones there, Oracle, SQL, um, but, and we, it mentions those because those are the ones that we primarily run across in the data center. Now, if you have MySQL that's running one of your um, enterprise-level applications, that's the back end. We can utilize that, or that kind of falls under the fold as well. DB2, Sybase, ACE Data Server, all database solutions that fit under this category. And so, again, now I'm eliminating the need for multiple tools because this one lays at the top of all of those and is allowing me to uh, do the clusters. That's very common with database administrators. And those DBAs spend a lot of the time making sure that those databases are configured a certain way, they're in a cluster, so this is basically automating a lot of that function where I'm able to deploy those databases very quickly in the environment. Okay, sounds kind of like it's a DBA in a box then. You exactly. just turn it on and it goes, right? Okay. And it goes, exactly. That's a good one. Alrighty, and so then our last solution is the middleware automation. And you can see there, it's the 
deploying and managing those Java Double E applications. And so a lot of times this now is going to be an application that lays on top of whatever server that was that you just deployed. And so this is kind of going back to that use case we mentioned before with, with Taxware, where they had um, a good solution for getting my servers up to a certain spec and ready in the environment. But now what I'm doing is I need an application that's going to sit on top of that. So this middleware automation piece basically allows me to lay that application down uh, very quickly, very succinctly, so that it's ready to go, too. So when I do my, um, my uh, applications, it's uh, as well another set of configuration objects that I need to deploy down. So once I've done that, I sit up and say, here's my baseline. And then what I may want to do is any audits, or it could be that I'm doing updates. But essentially, with the Blade Logic, I'm able to basically package those up and send those down. It could be in the dev environment. We make sure that it looks a certain way, and then we're rolling that into production. This, this so it's kind of like a dev DevOps uh, product, then, right? Yes, you could moving okay. the um, okay. applications from development to operations. Absolutely. Okay. And so then what we'll have here, let me just bring up the quote as well, um, concur. And so that's an expense um, application that's utilized by some companies. And they have a web uh, interface where I, as an end user, would be accessing this concur site to do my travel arrangements. And so they want to stay ahead of the curve and offer that end user um, the latest and greatest functionality. And so what they were utilizing the solution to do was allow them to put into play some of those new features. So before, you'll see their uh, one-month full-time employee required to prepare, stage, and deploy these monthly software releases. So monthly, they were needing to do some type of update, and it was requiring one uh, full-time employee. You'll see there on that second bullet, their audits were manually, uh, uh, manual tasks that were happening to be performed by the employees, and then as well they had the compliance with legal and industry industry regulations, too time consuming, again, because those were manual tasks. When we implemented the uh, middleware automation, what you're seeing there, the preparation and staging time slashed to just a few hours. So not a month, but just a few hours out of one day. So what that equated to was they were able to bring new features into the fold more quickly. So now that thrust concur above some of the other tools or their competitors who weren't able to bring those new features into the fold as quickly. You see there the second one, their audits were run with the touch of a button. Again, because we've stood up what those audits are, we can have our baseline, we see what the discrepancies are, and we can send those uh, changes back down to the, the application. And then the third one, so they didn't have to increase the staff um, to absorb any of those deployments, the tool made them more efficient. So there at the very bottom with Blade Logic, the deployment is done the same way every time, no matter who's doing the release. It's not up to the individuals to make a judgment call. People don't have to rely on their knowledge of a scripting language or their ability to decipher a log. So how huge is that? So that's where you're starting to now empower that level one, level two technician, even though they may not be able to write scripts. The consistency offered by Blade Logic eliminates the errors that can cause service disruptions. And so that's kind of that concur use case with respect to application automation. All right. Well, I think that kind of takes us to the end of the presentation. Thank you very much.